Okay. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, everyone, for uh, joining us. Uh, we're happy to offer our second Facebook Live um, on the college admission space and a lot of the changes happening to it. So we have a slightly different format this time. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to dedicate the first half to uh, college admissions, and we have our resident expert, Dr. Rebecca Hill, with us. Thanks for being with us, Rebecca. Thanks for having me, Lee. Rebecca, as always, um, is gonna give us insight into the college admissions process, and she is a master of all things uh, written, which is great. Um, so I, I would invite everyone, if you have questions, please enter them in the, the comments. We're gonna address as, as many of them as we can. Um, but I've already gotten some questions ahead of time for Rebecca, so why don't we just go ahead and, and give it a shot? So, all right, Rebecca, if I'm a parent, um, I've got a, I've got a, a junior. Um, how is their time best spent right now? So Lee, in the next couple months, a junior should be focused on a few discrete tasks if they're looking for some focus. Number one, they should be preparing for the AP tests if they are registered for them. College Board has plenty of past tests that they can practice from. There are sample questions. A lot of these tests have moved to an essay format this year. And one of the things that students should really practice with is how to write in a, in a time setting. Uh, so that's something that they should be working on. They should be looking at their college list to see if their colleges require or think that it's great to have some SAT subject tests so they can start studying for those. We expect that those will be offered in, in late summer and early fall. Um, but otherwise, in terms of looking ahead to the end of this academic year and, and into the summer, into what is traditionally a head start on the college app season, they might be doing something a little bit non-traditional non since a lot of the internships and part-time jobs and summer camps have been completely canceled or they're offered in a remote capacity, which may not be as, as profitable for, for the company or for the student. Um, they, they really wanna think about things that they can learn on, on their own or through uh, YouTube or through an online course that they did not have time for in, in the past or that they wouldn't have time for in the summer because of family vacations, summer camps and the like. Um, so really think about, you know, what are some of the skills that you need for the, the future? If one of your, your professional goals is to become a community uh, drama expert, uh, maybe read some, some Shakespeare. Uh, if you want to go into the technological field, this is a great time to learn how to, how to code, how to develop apps, and, and, and how to work with complicated software. And you don't really need to go to a class to do those things, although there, there are options. And I've been sending a lot of students to the PVCC summer class roster. There are still a lot of seats open in a variety of different fields from health medicine to business to marketing to psychology and the humanities. So I would recommend taking a really fun summer class that is offered in an online format. Um, you're probably gonna be taking it with a mixture of uh, people who are working, working professionals, parents who are you know, st stuck at home and just wanna learn something different and um, actual college students and then other, other high school students as, as well. So there's usually a good variety of, of uh, classmates to uh, learn from. So take a look at that. Like I said, PVCC has a lot of openings still. So most of the classes start either on May 26th, I believe, and June 15th. So there's, there's a, a couple of staggered sessions. Um, if you're really gunning for a um, mid to high, highly selective college, you might want to look at the online summer classes that they offer uh, because it'll give you an opportunity to work with faculty at that university before you even get there. Um, and it'll also kind of nudge the admissions officers um, in, in, a, in, in a favorable direction for you because it shows that you really wanted to just sample what that, what that school's culture was like in a, in a certain field. So I would recommend that. Um, just full, full disclosure, taking um, an online class at a university taking, versus taking it at a, a community college is probably gonna be a bit more pricey. 
Um, so community colleges, we're looking at like $150 to $200 per, per credit hour. Most classes are about three hours worth of credits. Um, at a private school or at a reputable state college, uh, you might be looking at more like $400 to $1,000 per, per credit. Um, so that's, it's, a, it's a huge cost difference, but if there's a, a particular school that you, you have your eye on, you should definitely consider that option. And then I think just to state the obvious, it's important to stay healthy and stay fit and to stay mentally sharp. So make sure that you're getting outside, jogging, riding, riding your bike. I don't know, you, some of you might, might skateboard or you might have skateboarded when you were younger. <laughs> you might go back to that. Um, do, do something active. Um, read just for, for pleasure. Um, don't let your mind and your body start to get lax because when you do have to return to school, it's going to be an uphill battle getting back into the swing of things. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that. I guess a couple follow-up questions, Rebecca. You know, you mentioned, um, you know, potentially taking a, taking a class at a community college. Is that really geared only for, uh, you know, juniors and uh, you know, rising seniors, I guess? Or could younger mm -hmm. grades, could, could, could freshmen and sophomores potentially opt for these classes as well? It really depends on the prerequisite classes that you have taken as a, as a high school student. For instance, let's say, let's say you want to take a, a pre-calc math class. Uh, the university or the, the college will probably not let you take it unless you've taken a certain number of foundational math classes prior to that. So if you in your freshman year and, and sophomore year have taken pretty high, high level courses relative to your, to your classmates, um, they, they may let you register. Um, I, I know that because registration is is down a little bit from what it would normally be. I think that a lot of the, the colleges are sort of loosening the hard and fast rules about who can take which, which course. That said, if you are a full-time high school student, you'll probably need permission from your, your high school counselor anyway. Um, so it's good to start that, that conversation now, especially given that some of these classes start in about three weeks. Awesome. Thanks for that, Rebecca. Okay, let, let's shift our focus to, to seniors, okay? Mm -hmm. They're getting yeah. ready to graduate and they don't really have yeah. a ceremony with the exception of what uh, John Krasinski did and some good news, right. yeah. um, definitely a different graduation. Uh, what, what mm -hmm. can they expect coming into their first semester of college? What, what is their yeah. college experience gonna look like? Yeah, um, it's, I mean, sadly, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be normal. You aren't gonna have uh, the, you know, summer bridge programs where students can check in early, move in early, set up their, set up their dorm room, meet, meet their, their new friends. Um, you aren't going to have an opportunity to really shop classes. I think you're probably just going to register and just be stuck in those, in those classes, whether they're online or in, in person. Um, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with college sports. Um, even if the teams still play, I know everyone is excited about, you know, football. Um, I don't really see a, a 10,000 people packed into a single stadium in, in the next year. So things are, things are, are going to look different. They are going to feel different. I, I know that certain colleges are making an effort to at least recreate some of the, the social life that everyone looks, looks forward to in their college years in an online format. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to feel like what college is supposed to feel like until we're all back on, on campus. Now, depending on where you're planning on going in the fall, if it's, uh, if it's in a major city, um, I'm gonna say the odds are 20 to 30% that you'll actually be meeting in an in-person format. Um, I think the most likely scenario is that everything is still gonna be completely digital, classes are gonna be online, and if there are, in-person classes that cannot be substituted with an online platform like chemistry classes for instance that it's going to be in a in a larger space where everyone is extremely spread out and rather than having 20 people in your in your in your seminar or your course you might have six it might be extremely small um, so it's it's a good 
it's a good method just to keep in in touch with with, with the school to make sure you keep checking their their website and their their social media for any any changes but also if the college has maintained to this point that they will be open in the fall you also want to keep up with things like registering for housing and enrolling in freshman year courses and getting in touch with with faculty who will be teaching you in this next year so we want to keep operating as if we will be on on campus in this this next this next semester but i, I think we just have to plan for everything um and if you hadn't already thought about it you know a a gap year is still a a possibility all right good good uh, segue there we we had a, we have a couple questions about that already um so uh -huh. Uh, I, I see a, basically just a statement says this year seems like a good time for a gap year. So An Rebecca, excellent time for a gap year. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess a couple of questions there. So mm -hmm. for seniors, um, the commitment day has the commitment day already uh, come and gone. Um, some well, some students have have already committed if they're pretty confident in which which institution they want to attend, but. A lot of colleges have extended that deadline to to June first, so there's certainly a, a lot of um, balls in the air, and there's students who are getting off of the wait list still. So that's that's going to be pretty relevant to some to some students for the next couple of weeks. So Rebecca, is it too late? Like, if I've already committed, can I can I take still take a gap year? Can I contact my university and say I, I'm I'm, I'm going to take a gap year? you you probably can but it's it's just good it's good form to be in constant communication about how that would work because if you've already committed uh the university may hold you to a stipulation that you resubmit an application in this next cycle um they will they will guarantee that you will have a seat for fall 2021 um, but it's it's just it's good it's good form to be in really clear communication with what your your plans are, and it's oh. it's it may even be possible to negotiate for a, a half gap year, where you take off during during the fall to work on something else, and then you you enter college as a as a freshman in January. Interesting, and I, I guess a, a follow up and maybe to your point is okay. So I take a gap year. Well, mm -hmm. I, I know what I would have done two years ago. Maybe I go teach a <laughs> surfing class in New Zealand or something, and then right. volunteer. What, what do you? What do students do now? So, what, what do they do during a gap in a COVID environment? Gap. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're if you're surfing at least six feet away from other surfers, I think it would be. I think it'd be okay. Um, I think I think the issue would be getting to New Zealand. I don't think they're going to be letting anybody in for the next year. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is this is really critical. So if you don't have a plan, don't just take gap year to hang out for the next six months. Um, if you really have found some kind of structured program where it's like, okay, I'm I'm going to help this startup business develop a website for the next six months, and that's all I'm going to focus on, and, and my goal is to develop professional skills. That I could then use later, or if I'm if I'm trying to learn Russian because I want to translate Tolstoy one day, um, only do that for, for the next six months. You really have to be creative about what can be done from home because, as as I was just telling you before, we also don't know what the restrictions are are, are going to be in the next six months. There could be other waves of the um, you know pandemic. So it, the the odds are that you're probably not going to be able to do community service work that involves working in close proximity to other people. But you may be able to do the kind of uh, service work that has to do with you know, walking through forests and collecting samples of, you know, of, of soil. There, there are things like that. So there are, are definitely projects that, that can be done either at home or at a, a safe distance from others. And uh, if, if anyone needs help trying to figure out what th those options are, I'm certainly willing to do that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for, for that answer, Rebecca. Um, there's a ton of comments coming in. Uh, thanks, Kelly, Dawn, Mary, Iris, um, Roslyn, and uh, Lauren for, for chiming with your questions. Uh, Lauren Ryan has a really great question. Got a lot of thumbs up to this. So I, the question now ties into gap year. 
so what happens in in the admissions of fall 2021 if everyone takes a gap year or defers what, mm -hmm. what's going to happen what are going to be the ramifications for that admissions year yes the logistics of that are going to be a nightmare and i don't envy colleges for having to figure that out um i think larger state colleges that have the have the capacity for a large fluctuation of of, of an incoming student body um will probably be able to to handle that better than you know smaller liberal arts colleges where you know the class size is maximum 1200 people um i i anticipate if that if that's what happens if, if we see that a large percentage of admitted college students decide to take gap year in this this upcoming uh fall um that the fall 2021 st like the statistics will be very skewed toward uh the, the schools being extremely conservative with how many students that they that they let in and i think i see that having an impact more on smaller schools with a sort of fixed spatial issues um and not so much a, a problem at, at large state schools you also have to consider that there's probably a number of returning sophomores juniors seniors who may not come back or who may end up transferring closer to home or may realize you know this this college track is just not for me things aren't aren't really stable right now you know i was planning to go into a uh, career painting, but now I'm going to withdraw from that and I'm going to learn how to do something that will that will make money in, in the next 10 years. So Rebecca, it sounds like what you're saying is maybe larger schools like VCU might have the ability to take in like larger classes and they'll have some flexibility, but maybe sure. smaller schools like Elon will have a little bit yeah. more difficult time with with major fluctuations like that. Um, do you think it's possible that uh, it, this fall schools that uh, plan to use a hybrid in-person virtual um, mm -hmm. learning environment might be able to enable that same type of hybrid program next year to accommodate for some of these admissions changes? Possibly, possibly. And I, I know of many colleges um, just in their, in their building of, of contingency plans are thinking like how, how many students can realistically take a course from us in, in an online format? Can we actually raise the number of, of students we are able to take in this, this upcoming year? Because some, some students can come to the campus if, if they wish to and some can just stay home. Um, I, I don't really see in, in certain types of classes where you'd, you'd be in a large lecture hall anyway, um, I don't really see the quality of the content uh, lessening in, in any way. However, um, there are just some things that happen in the scope of, of college life uh, that you just won't get. And is it, is it worth paying tuition if the only thing that you are receiving are credits from a, 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 a highly ranked brand name college? Um, so that's, that's something that you know, families and students have to consider on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, Rebecca, we've talked about this a lot. You know, a lot of the college experience is not necessarily what your teacher is teaching you. It's the peer mm -hmm. learning environments and those small groups that you find. And so right. I think to your point, those just don't happen as organically in a virtual environment. And so, you know, mm -hmm. I, I guess the follow-up question and one I saw in the comments was, um, you know, will these pri you know private schools maybe big public schools are they still going to charge the same tuition if they do <laughs> think they're going to be doing everything virtually in, in the fall yeah i i certainly hope not i i certainly hope not I, I don't think it's fair to families but i also recognize um you know as someone who has been been faculty at a, a number of, of different colleges that that colleges have to pay teachers um, so I, I think this is forcing universities to become more lean in, in how they, they operate. And I think more of that money is going to be funneled towards who are, the, who are the people who are instructing and also supporting students and how do we, we support students who would not be able to pay full, full tuition. So I, I hope that more of those, of those dollars will be earmarked for those particular purposes. Um, but 
I, I also don't see a lot of clarity yet from universities about how that will all pan out in, in the fall. So I, I think that's something that we'll probably have to wait until June, July to really see when uh, universities start sending bills out. Um, will there be a reduction of costs if you're not able to live on, on campus? Um, I, I think in, a, in a, a, a socially just way, they should definitely do that. Um, but they should also do that with a way to also pay teachers. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, th there was another question. So, you know, you and I have also talked about this. We don't think higher ed is going away, right? This isn't going to be the downfall so. <laughs> of colleges. Yeah. It's just going to be an right. evolution, right? Um, mm -hmm. So a good question from Rosalind. So she's got a junior and um, he is definitely planning on going to college. Mm -hmm. Should he be reaching out to advisors and admissions officers at the schools which he wants mm -hmm. to apply? And he's, is he going to get in-person interviews or is he going to have to do it virtually? Um, and and how's mm -hmm. that, how should that process work? I guess this goes under yeah. demonstrated interest. Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely right. And there, as I said in, in a past meeting like this, we, um, there are colleges that track how many times students have reached out to different faculty, people in the admissions office, people in the, in the alumni network. Um, some of them don't, I mean, they just don't have the you know, capacity to, to collect and analyze data like that. Um, but he should definitely do that. You, you will not be penalized for over communicating interest. Uh, that, that never happens. Um, you know, if you're, if you're showing up at their, at their, at their doorstep with a, you know, dozen roses, that's a little different, but you, you won't be penalized for reaching out and, and, and asking questions that you would normally ask if you were able to do a campus tour or some, some kind of summer camp there. Um, so don't be shy and keep in, in, in mind that colleges, I think in this upcoming cycle, we'll be desperate to get as many students to, to submit an application as, as, as possible. So they will be, you know, courting you. It, it, it won't be the other way around. So that, that's, a, that's a very good point and one that you've made clear on, on, on many cases um, that colleges now, they, they, they need students. And so now <laughs> the onus is on the student to find that best fit. So mm -hmm. now with these virtual tours, how does this, I mean, how can a student really get a sense for campus life? <laughs> Even though we know campus life isn't gonna be the same, how, how should a mm -hmm. student get a, get a feel for campus life? I, to be quite honest, a very quick way to, to do that is look at any social media that is tagged on that, on that campus. Uh, you will get a very clear picture about what students do when they're, they're not going to class because the, the university website will do a fantastic job of showcasing all the different faculty and the Nobel laureates and the Pulitzer Prize winners and the very distinguished lecture series, but nothing will give you a, a clearer picture than going to um, any social media platform, you know, typing in that, that college as the location um, and just seeing what, what people post. Yeah, that's 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 great. And that that's that was true a year ago, right? Is and yeah. just as true today. So, um, really, a lot of great questions coming in. Thanks for everyone for liking the video, posting the questions. There's a lot of questions about SAT and ACT. I'll cover that with my business partner Scott Webster um, just as soon as Rebecca's done. But um, Lauren Ryan had a really great follow up. Um, she mm -hmm. said. Uh, are colleges going to put um, a limit on how many students can defer that way they can guarantee some sort of income? Like you said, if there's mm -hmm. faculty waiting on the other end of this and 50% of the students decide to defer, how do they support their staff? And do you expect these limits to exist? That's, that's a very good question. I know that colleges are having that discussion right now. None of them have made something public. Um, and one way to limit the number of students who, who defer without actually telling them that they can't do that is to make it mandatory, as I said before, for the student to resubmit an, an application in the upcoming cycle, um, given that they'll probably be guaranteed a spot in the fall 2021 class, um, but just 
just having students know that they, they have to go through this exercise of filling out Common App again and submitting the, the, the letters of recommendation and, and possibly making some, some updates to their, their personal statement, some of them just won't want to do that. Um, so I, I'm waiting for, for colleges to say something publicly, but I, I do know that those, those conversations are definitely happening right now, right, right now because that's a, a huge concern. What if nobody shows up in the fall? Right. Um, but I, I also know that very eager graduating seniors just want to get to the next step and want to leave home and want to experience something different. So um, I, I don't really think it's realistic that a college won't have anybody showing up for, for the fall, either virtually or, or in person. Like, like we said, it's, it's not going away. It just, it might be changed possibly mm -hmm. forever. So um, I guess another question, really good question from, from PJ. Um, he was asking about, do we expect the distribution between foreign and domestic students to change? Mm -hmm. um, are there gonna be less Absolutely. foreign students and will that allow for a bigger influx of, of US students to apply? Yeah. Foreign nationals need uh, visas, and visas are going to be incredibly difficult to to secure in this in, in this upcoming year. Typically, if you can show a, a clean bill of uh, health, which you'd have to do anyway, um, to get a a student visa, um, if you already have the acceptance from that from that college, is is pretty easy. But we have seen a lot of changes to who can who can cross the border, who can who can stay here, and for uh, how long in in the last two months, that is subject to radically change. Um, and I also think there are a number of students in, in other countries uh, where COVID cases are not as uh, prevalent, and they don't want to risk coming to the U.S. where cases are substantially higher and probably will be for for the foreseeable future. Um, so I, I definitely see that a good chunk of a freshman class, which would normally be foreign nationals, um, is probably going to, to open up for, for other, other, other applicants from the U.S. But I could also see that colleges may uh, try to reduce the, the, the freshman class by just accepting the same number of domestic students. Well, uh, Rebecca, just to give us a, a gauge for how big this is, at, at UVA, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I remember reading, is it like, is it 10% of the population are, are foreign students? Does that sound about right? Do you, do you know what those like numbers that. are? Okay. Yeah. Is, that, is that generally true? How much does that fluctuate from school to school? Um, it, I mean, it, it really does fluctuate. There are, uh, there are schools where the, the, board of, the, the boards of uh, trustees Will will only permit a, a certain percentage of the 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 freshman class to be foreign nationals. Um, there are school systems like like the University of uh, California system, which could probably not survive unless they had fully tuition paying students from 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 other countries. Um, so I, there there's a good incentive to continue to to connect to to students from other countries because. They generally do not qualify for for financial aid, and are keeping those those schools floating. Wow, that's a really interesting point. One I hadn't thought of, Rebecca, is that the international mm -hmm. students are all full paying, and right. so if you take out even ten percent, you might be taking out a much bigger percentage of the college's revenue. Exactly. Wow. Um, yeah. So really good question in here. So um, I guess there's a there's some there's a rumor going around that. Um, well, I guess we just frame it. If I take a gap year, am I still required to pay tuition? Do I, do I get to wait a year before I pay tuition or do I have to pay tuition right now? Generally, no. Generally, no. Although many schools are offering a fixed tuition plan. So if you, if you pay up now, so for instance, tuition may, may skyrocket next year. Um, so if you, if you pay now for your freshman year, the university will just hold it and, and will not charge you more uh, if, if rates do go up. Um, so many, many colleges are offering, uh, are offering this, this sort of deal where families can pay for all, all four years of college at a fixed rate, which uh, protects them from any, from any spikes in uh, tuition. But generally speaking, um, you, you should not have to pay to, to take gap year. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's that's uh, great, and and got to some of those points. Um, I mm -hmm. guess in in closing, uh, I kind of just one question, and uh, one that you and I speak about quite a bit is, um, has COVID nineteen um, affected under resourced populations more? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and and if so, what what's being done to to help address this need? Yeah, no, it very, very sadly it, it has. And for, for every for every student that is comfortably uh, at, at home with really well working internet and, and Wi-Fi, um, who's able to complete all of their all of their high school coursework and able to study for, for standardized tests and, and even work on some you know pet projects. Um, for, for every student like that, there is at least one, one student who is maybe still going to work somewhere at a uh, supermarket, at a, at a gas station, um, someone who, who still needs to, to go out and earn money to support the family, to pay for rent, pay for uh, health care, um, who may be sharing a, a room with two or three or even, even four siblings, um, who maybe doesn't have, you know, a um, stable connection to, to to the internet to their to their cell phone service. Um, these students are are really going to struggle in this in this next year, in um, you know showcasing what it is that they that they did during this this whole crisis. Um, and my my hope, my sincere hope, is that universities will um, put some resources toward having readers of of, of the applications in the admissions office really be sensitive um, to the circumstances in, in which students had to uh, survive. And I, and I do think that there is gonna be, um, I, I don't wanna say like lax rules or that standards will uh, drop, but there's definitely a, an opportunity for students who aren't as, as well resourced to show a tremendous amount of, of personal character during this, during this, this pandemic. Um, and, I, and I do hope and I do think that the right kinds of universities will reward that, knowing that that student couldn't do the same types of charitable projects or, um, you know, learning, learning how to speak Russian as some of their more, more well-off peers. Yeah, um, and I guess it sounds like this, um, this crisis and this pandemic, do you, do you think it's furthering the achievement gap? Or, or broadening Absolutely. it. Okay. Absolutely. If, yeah. if I if I live in the Charlottesville area, what can we do to to help um, you know bridge this gap? Good plug, right? <laughs> Shameless plug. Got to. Uh, you you can you can donate to the Better Future Foundation, uh, which I am uh, currently directing for the the, the interim, um, and we do just this. We we help students craft their their personal story to get into college as as first generation students. Great. Awesome. Well, Rebecca, thanks so much. We will definitely have to do this again in, in a couple of weeks. I didn't get a chance to get to all the questions. Our very own Logan Bro uh, popped in a couple <laughs> questions about uh, PVCC, but we'll address those next time. So thanks so much, yeah. Rebecca. And um, for those of you tuning in, we're now going to uh, move to the SAT and ACT portion. So thanks so thanks, much, Lee. Rebecca. Thanks, Lee.